Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to MSP lecture series on main group chemistry. In my previous lecture, I spoke on uh, oxides of group 13 elements. Today, let me speak on halides of group 13 elements. Uh, boron trihalides are monomeric under ordinary conditions and possess trigonal planar structures. Uh, they are much more volatile than the corresponding compounds of aluminum. The trifluorides of aluminum, gallium, indium and thallium are non-volatile solids uh, best prepared by the fluorination of the metal or one of its simple compounds with fluorine gas. In fact, when we talk about uh, trihalides of uh, group 13 elements, all combinations of M and X occur in trivalent MX3 that means when we consider mx3 all combination are possible where m equals boron, aluminum, gallium, indium and thallium and x fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. Okay. So, all combinations are possible with an exception of thallium triiodide. The reason is very simple. Any combination of highly oxidizing and highly reducing species is unstable and here thallium plus 3 is essentially oxidizing in nature and I minus is reducing. So, as a result what happens? This one is unstable. Uh, except for this one all combinations are possible and as I mentioned uh, all trivalent halides are planar molecules and they have an empty p orbital perpendicular to the plane in BF3 and in fact also in BCL3 the spy back donation from field X pi orbital that means you just recall uh, chlorine or fluorine okay, when they have acquired an electron they have a S2P6 electronic configuration. Out of that one that means 4 pairs of electrons are available in the valence shell of any halide anion. Out of that one if one pair is utilized in bonding other 3 pairs are available for pi bonding. Out of that one of the fluorine can always okay, donate uh, through 2 pi, 2 pi or 2 pi, 3 pi interactions. Uh, to overcome some of the electron deficiency of boron atom and in this case essentially uh, boron fluorine bonds have some multiple bond character more compared to BCL3. Here in case of BCL3 we are talking about a 2P and 3P overlapping and uh, because of mismatch this overlapping is very poor as a result what happens a poor back bonding one can anticipate from chlorine to boron as a result what happens boron trichloride remains more stronger or powerful Lewis acid compared to BF3. Okay. So, you just recall the MO diagram I showed for uh, BF3 molecule while discussing the bonding concepts that time I showed you this one this uh, I wrote MO diagram for BF3. Here you just see B can utilize 4 valence orbital, so uh, 2 P orbitals and 2 S orbital whereas here this F3 fragment has 12 orbitals essentially each one has 3 P and 1 S. So, as a result total of we have 12 ligand group orbitals. These ligand group orbitals will combine with B to form this bonding and non-bonding that means essentially we have total of 16 atomic orbital out of 16 atomic orbitals 4 atomic orbitals are used for bonding and 4 for anti-bonding and remaining 8 re remaining 8 remain as non-bonding with 16 electrons. You may be wondering from where these 16 electrons are coming just uh, go back to uh, this BF 
uh, Lewis dot structure. Okay, of course, this is planar. So, we have this kind of situation here. We have three pairs of electron on each. Let us assume one of the fluorine atom gives a pair of electron through back bonding uh, p pi p pi. So, then still we are left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That means 8 pairs of electrons. 8 pairs of electrons are still left. And these 8 pairs of electrons are essentially occupying here. This one pair, whatever is there, that is participating in bonding can be seen here in this one. This is the one that is responsible for, that is essentially coming from Pz, that is perpendicular to the plane of the molecule, where Px and Py are combined with S to form sp2 hybrid orbitals. Okay. So, you can see here and, and uh, in, in, in case if you write similar MO diagram for dh3, we are considering h3 fragment here. So, in this case here this would not be there because it accounts for only 6 electrons, 3 electrons from uh, uh, S2P1 of boron and 1 electron each from hydrogen. So, that essentially comes for 6 electrons. Okay. So, this one is essentially coming from uh, one of the fluorine lone pairs. So, that is making it multiple bond character in one of that one. So, that essentially gives or satisfies the octet of boron okay. and remaining 16 electrons are placed here, they are non-bonding. So, Bx3 are monomers, okay. uh, the structures of AlX3 that means aluminum trichloride fluoride dependent on the type of halide we are using. Aluminum trifluoride is a high melting polymeric solid built from fluorine bridged AlF6 octahedra. The structure of AlCl3 in the solid state has 6 coordinate aluminum centers with chloride bridges. However, in the liquid and gas phase, aluminum trichloride remains dimeric that is called Al2Cl6 with dative bonds between aluminum and chlorine in the bridging unit. I will be showing those structures soon. Aluminum tribromide and aluminum triiodide are dimeric in all states. Okay. So, before I show the structures, let us see how one can prepare some of this group 13 halides. All boron trihalides except Bi3 may be prepared by direct reaction between the elements. However, the preferred method for BF3 preparation is the reaction of B2O3 with calcium fluoride in sulfuric acid. You should remember calcium fluoride is a powerful fluorinating agent. So, let me write this uh, uh, reaction methods through a balanced chemical equation. Similarly, uh, the reaction between boron and chlorine or bromine yields BCl3 and BBr3. Uh, for example, in case of uh, uh, BCl3, when it is treated with uh, HI, it can give Bi3 plus 3 HCl or one can also start with sodium borohydride plus 8 equivalents of iodine, it gives So, this is how one can prepare uh, 
bismuth triiodide. Let us look into the nature of these uh, halides of boron and BF3 is colorless gas boiling point 172 Kelvin and BX bond distance, BF bond distance is 131 picometer. In B, BCL3 is a colorless liquid boiling point 285 Kelvin, melting point 166 Kelvin and bond distance is 174. BBR3 again colorless liquid with boiling point 364 Kelvin and melting point is 227 Kelvin and uh, here BBR distance is 189 picometer. Boron triiodide is a white solid with melting point 316 Kelvin and the boron to iodine bond distance is 210 picometer. So, all are planar molecules. And tetrafluoroboric acid HBF4 okay, is essentially a very strong acid and it can be prepared by conveniently mixing HF with BF3. Okay, it is a very strong proton donor. However, the very strong proton donor is essentially a combination of HF plus SBF5. This is HBF6. This is a much more stronger uh, proton donor compared to this one. And if you consider BF4 anion, this is very similar to uh, PF6 anion and they coordinate very weakly to metal centers and it is often used as an innocent anion to precipitate larger cations, especially of those of transition metal uh, complexes. So, boron trifluoride forms a range of complexes with ethers, nitriles and amines. That means essentially uh, they are all having donor atoms such as nitrogen or oxygen. And of course, commercially BF3 is available as uh, etherate. Okay. Multiple bonding or partial double bond character comes can be seen from this diagram here. Uh, you can see here as I said when uh, uh, in, in a typical planar molecule, uh, if you consider a, So, so these are all PZ orbitals, we have electrons here and here this is empty uh, uh, PZ orbital. So, here one can see interactions and this results in multiple bond character and in case of boron we can anticipate 2P, 2P interaction, 2P pi, uh, 2P pi interactions. Okay. Uh, uh, the formation of partial bonds in trigonal planar B X3 molecule can be considered in terms of the donation of electron density from the field P atomic orbitals on the X atoms that is a halide into the empty 2P atomic orbitals on boron. So, reaction of B X3 with Lewis base uh, results in a change from a trigonal planar to Okay, uh, tetrahedral molecule. In that case, what happens? Uh, essentially, instead of forming sp2 hybridization, it forms the sp3 hybridization, having three sp3 orbitals having one electron each and one sp3 having no electron. So this, without any electron, will interact with uh, filled 2p orbitals of fluorine or 3p orbitals of chlorine to form multiple bonding or have a pi bonding like this. You can see clearly here. Okay. Of course, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, multiple bonding between boron and fluorine is much more stronger compared to boron and chlorine because here we are talking about uh, 2p with 3p interaction because of the mismatch of the orbital overlapping is not very efficient whereas in case of boron trifluoride we are talking about 2p 2p interaction. Here the uh, overlapping is more efficient as a result what happens BF3 somehow overcomes the electron deficiency uh, compared to BCL3 as a result 
BF3 is slightly less Lewis acidic in nature compared to BCL3. So, this shows the reactions of boron halogen compounds. For example, you can see uh, here uh, BX3 uh, uh, can react with water to form boric acid BOH thrice or you treat that one with alcohol to form corresponding uh, uh, alkoxide or aryl oxides or one can treat with uh, amines to form adducts or one can also treat with uh, uh, dialkyl sulphide or diaryl sulphide to form the adduct again similar to amine adducts and when it is reacted with uh, phosphine also forms adduct and similar adducts are also known with carbon monoxide as well and on treatment with amine it undergoes protolysis to form uh, this kind of compounds B N H R three times. Okay. These are some reactions of boron halogen compounds and boron chlorides, bromides and iodides are susceptible to hydrolysis by mild proton sources such as water, alcohol or even amines that you saw. So, just let me show one reaction here although I had shown in that previous slide. And whereas BF3 forms an adduct with the NH3 and BCL3 reacts in liquid ammonia to form form B NH2 three times, whereas BF3 simply forms. forms an adduct the preparation of alkyl boron or aryl boron compounds is essentially starting from the corresponding boron halides for example uh, bf3 on treatment with methyl magnesium iodide can give trimethyl boron of course plus you get magnesium halide such as okay so mgif and similarly one can also treat bf3 with methyl lithium methyl lithium is a tetramer so one can write like this it gives So, one can write either Me or one can also write CH3. So, boron halides containing boron boron bonds also have been prepared. The best known of these compounds are essentially uh, B2X4. Okay. So, for example, B2Cl4. Okay. So, this is essentially a planar molecule. One can also make similarly B2 F4 as well or B2 Br4. Okay, so, here you can see uh, in solid state B2 F4 and B2 Cl4 are planar molecules you can see here whereas, vapor phase BCL2 units are orthogonal to each other. So, one of the BCL2 becomes orthogonal or it will be perpendicular to the another BCL unit and of course, B4 Cl4 uh, has a, a structure like this where 4 boron atoms are uh, disposed to 4 kernels of tetrahedron and here these are all chlorine atoms and metathesis reaction can be used to make these uh, B2X4 uh, derivatives. Uh, the thermal stability of these derivatives increases with increasing tendency of the X group to form pi bonds with boron. So, one can write the stability in this order B2Cl4 
B to F4, B to war, 4, And these B2Cl4, okay, at higher temperature can give higher analogs of boron halides. For example, B2Cl4, when it is heated to 720 Kelvin, within few minutes, it forms B9Cl9. Or on heating this one to 373 Kelvin, in presence of CCl4, uh, over several days, it gives B8, Cl8, okay. And B2, Br4 adopts a staggered conformation in the vapor, liquid and solid phase. Of course, the preference of this one is not clearly understood. Uh, B2, Br4, unlike uh, B2Cl4 or B2F4 adopts a staggered uh, conformation in the vapor phase as well as in liquid as well as solid phase. These preferences are not readily understood or can be explained. Probably one can anticipate that because of the larger size when they are planar probably that leads to the bromine bromine interaction to prevent that one instead of like this instead of something like this. Okay, it becomes something like this. So, if you assume this is uh, uh, boron, B boron and another one instead of like this, it becomes like this so that bromine atoms can move away from each other uh, giving a staggered conformation. Okay. So, let us look into now aluminum, gallium, indium and thallium halides. Uh, these trifluorides are non-volatile solids and Compounds are obtained by direct combination of the elements, again uh, treating aluminum, gallium or indium with the corresponding halo halogens, one can make these uh, trihalides. And they are relatively volatile in the solid state, possess layer lattice or lattice containing dimers of the type M2X6, only at high temperature they dissociate to monomeric MX3. And solid AlCl3 adopts octahedral structure. I will show you the structure. Okay, before I show the structures of all these uh, uh, halides, let me show the methods of preparation of these halides. Uh, Al2O3 on treatment with 6HF, it gives AlF3 plus 3H2O. So, the preparation of anhydrous aluminum chloride can be uh, 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 planned using one of the following methods I am going to write. For example, you can treat directly aluminum with uh, dry chlorine gas, it should be very dry to get anhydrous aluminum trichloride. Of course, if it is hydrated or it is wet, one can also sublime aluminum trichloride uh, to get anhydrous aluminum trichloride and of repeated sublimation can give you ultra pure very dry aluminum trichloride. One can also use aluminum oxide uh, and chlorine in presence of carbon as a reducing agent. One can use carbon or carbon monoxide so when you use carbon monoxide you get carbon dioxide and aluminum trichloride reacts towards moisture uh, 
for example, uh, it can form aluminum oxide it can Let me show you the structures now. So, here in aluminum trifluoride, each aluminum center is octahedral surrounded by 6 fluorine atoms, each of which links to uh, aluminum centers in a linear manner. So, having angle close to 180. The octahedral ALF 6 unit is encountered in other aluminum fluoride. So, if you just look into the monomeric unit, it, it looks in this fashion. For example, if I consider So, it continues like this, each monomeric unit will be having this kind of linear one. Of course, I can tell you why it is linear, whereas in case of uh, uh, chloride it is, it is little different. You can see here, we have a bent structure here okay? and you see that the solid state in liquid state and uh, gaseous state it, uh, it uh, exists in the dimeric form, whereas in uh, uh, solid state uh, it is hexa coordinated in this fashion. Uh, you see this is how it is there, you, you have a layered structure something like this and that can be seen here in this one. So, you have a layer structure where each aluminum uh, has is 6 coordinated and these chlorine atoms again make bond uh, with the neighboring aluminum in this fashion and this layer structure continues. And, and the, the question is why uh, in case of uh, aluminum? chloride, uh, we have a, a bent structure like this, whereas in case of aluminum fluoride, we have a linear. Uh, this has to do something with uh, the size of uh, the halides. If, if you just see here, the size of this one is little bigger, uh, something like this, okay, and here it is much more bigger. So, uh, so, one can expect them to have this kind of overlapping here. Of course, here we have lone pairs. Whereas, in case of fluorine, <coughs> because of the smaller size, if we, if we try to uh, make a bent structure, we have to force two aluminum atoms come very close and your fluorine will sit somewhere here because of the smaller size. Uh, because of this situation, what happens? These two will start repelling, two cations coming very close to close together will repel as a result it is destabilized. Instead, okay, uh, they prefer to have this kind of, uh, okay. so here uh, cations are kept away from each other. For this reason, most of the fluorides have a linear structure and to have <coughs> a, a polymeric structure they have to be, the monomers has to be minimum of trimeric, but mostly they prefer tetrameric structure, whereas in case of chlorine, one can always anticipate bent. Uh, be uh, bent angles at chlorine atoms. Okay. Uh, <coughs> cryolite uh, is uh, essentially Na3 AlF6 uh, that occurs naturally, but can also be synthesized to meet the commercial needs uh, and also in case of uh, electrolysis of uh, <coughs> aluminum oxide uh, to get uh, aluminum. So, the solid state structure of cryolite is related to the perovskite lattice and one can conveniently prepare uh, starting from aluminum hydroxide treating with HF in presence of sodium hydroxide. It gives Na3AlF6. H2O. <coughs> so, when water is dripped onto solid aluminum trichloride, vigorous hydrolysis occurs, but in dilute aqueous solution, it forms a 
E plus and okay, with NH3 uh, aluminum trichloride forms an adduct in the solid state and of course, in this one there is a intermolecular hydrogen bonding uh, is there uh, that exists as a result of this kind of interactions. Okay. Some intermolecular hydrogen bonding is anticipated. Okay. So, so, let me stop uh, uh, here and let me continue in my next lecture uh, more about gallium and indium trichlorides, tribromides and also their uh, lower uh, halides. Thank you very much. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.